Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to look at moving Enterprise Vault archives using the Move Archive tool. My name is Phil Walters and I'm a consultant working with Adeptech. So before we get into the technical detail, let's consider why we would move Enterprise Vault archives. Well, one reason is the migration of mailboxes between sites. If we move a mailbox from one exchange server to another, then we would also want to move the Enterprise Vault archive to a local Enterprise Vault server. Otherwise, when the users are opening their archived items, they're going to be doing it over the wide area network. Of course, there are other reasons as well, such as consolidation of EV environments, maybe re-implementing EV with new architecture, or a spin-off of a business unit or an acquisition of a company using EV. Generally, as we move to the right-hand side, we should consider using a third-party solution instead of the built-in tool. Before we actually start an archive migration project, there are a number of things to consider. First of all, we should understand the technical architecture of both the source and target environments. Also understand the legal and regulatory requirements for handling archive data. It's also very important to take into account the impact of migration on end users, both during and post-migration. So within Enterprise Vault, we have a tool built into the EV administration console for moving individual archives. This tool isn't a bulk archive migration tool. It is for individual archives only. There are five stages of the move archive process which we can see in the Move Archive status window. Stage 1 is where data is copied to the destination archive. Stage 2 is where the process is waiting for shortcut processing to happen. Stage 3 is when shortcut processing actually happens. Stage 4 is waiting for backup of the destination archive. And stage 5 is verifying that every item has been moved successfully. There are a number of preparation tasks that we should do before we start to move archives. First of all, we should decide on the schedule for the move archive task. Generally, move archive should run during the day um, and mailbox archiving run during the evening or night. We should also consider the mailbox archiving task schedule because it will have extra work to do with shortcut processing, so we may need to extend the time. We can also tune the settings of the Move Archive task. In a screenshot, you can see the properties of the Move Archive task. And we can set the priority of Move Archive operations. By default, it's set to below normal. We can also set the number of concurrent move operations and the number of threads per move operation. If we've got a lot of archives to move, then we can increase the number of concurrent moves and the number of threads per move operation. If we are moving a large number of archives, then the number of extra things that we should consider. So as I said before, schedule the move archive task at a different time from the move archiving task. We can calculate the time needed to move archives. The performance guide gives useful figures it's useful to divide the users into blocks and prioritise those that you want to move first. Then we add the users and allow the move archive task to take place during the scheduled period. We can then calculate the actual rate of archiving. Allow the daily scheduled mailbox archiving task to complete and update the shortcuts. And then ensure the destination vault store is backed up. As of a useful rule of thumb, the verification process takes about 50% of the time to ingest the items originally. There are a number of different ways of monitoring the Move Archive process. We've got the Move Archive status window, which shows us which stage each archive has got to. We've got the Enterprise Vault event logs, which will show us also the different stages. The Move Archive reports are very useful for seeing um, detailed logs of each move. 
Move Archive status is also reported to Enterprise Vault Operations Manager and Enterprise Vault Reports if they are configured. Finally, if we're wanting to troubleshoot issues with Move Archive, then we can use the DTrace log as well. There are a number of advanced configuration settings for Move Archive. We can use the relevant exe.config file to set advanced settings. Example files can be found in the Enterprise Vault Programs directory. For Move Archive tasks, the relevant file is example evtaskguardian.exe.config and example evmovearchivetask.exe.config. Full details of the settings can be found in the Enterprise Vault white paper Move Archive Feature Overview. If you're using Vault Cache, then there's best practice for how to handle those users. It's recommended to disable Vault Cache before the archive is moved, then move the archive, and then once it's moved, ensure that the hidden message is updated if Outlook's in cache mode and restart Outlook. Then you can enable Vault Cache and do a synchronization. So that brings us to the end of this video about how to move archives using the Enterprise Vault move archive process. If you want to find out more, I suggest you check out the separate demonstration video and there's a link to it here.